Welcome into the Aggie Overtime Zoomcast. It's being presented to you by your local GEICO office. Make sure to call your local GEICO office today for all your insurance needs during these challenging times. And we wanted to reach out to you. Obviously, we're all at home. We're trying to stay safe. We're trying to stay sane at the same time. We're trying to stay informed about what's going on in our world, including UC Davis Athletics. So we thought for our first Zoomcast, we were bringing in the man who could probably give us the most information, most timely, most current. We're talking about Director of Athletics, Kevin Blue. And Kevin, thank you so much for coming into the Aggie Overtime Zoomcast. It's great to see you, first of all. It's been a while. How are you holding up personally? Everything's great, Scott. On the personal front, my wife and I welcomed a new baby girl on March 1st. Congratulations. So, thank you. So, so paternity leave combined with uh, shelter in place means that I've been changing a lot of diapers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have a newborn, some young kids in the house, and uh, obviously it makes the, the work world a little more challenging. Yeah, but fun, and um, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. So it's the 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 shelter in place is is obviously challenging for everybody, but the silver lining is that there's more time spent around the around the the family and the kids now. Uh, sometimes there's there's some fun background noise on my work calls, but. <laughs> It's all right. It's, uh, everyone's rolling with it these days. Yeah, you'll have to show some of the video act outtakes. Maybe we'll get a couple during our Zoom cast here in the next 15 minutes or so. But uh, congratulations again. We're, we're so glad to hear about uh, the new addition to your family. And uh, of course, everybody is happy and, and healthy there. That's the most important thing. Yeah, Kevin, if you could give us kind of a current state of the, the union of, of UC Davis Athletics and how you've been able to kind of stay in contact with everybody with, of course, everybody spread out right now throughout the athletic department. Yeah, well, we, uh, as, as people might be aware, we canceled all um, intercollegiate athletics activities, practices, competitions, et cetera. Uh, a few weeks ago uh, in light of the developing COVID-19 situation and a few, you know, uh, probably several days before, in fact, the, the state's shelter in place uh, directive. Since then, the student athletes have returned, primarily returned home. Some are still in Davis in their apartments. Um, many of them are home in California and at a, in other parts of the world. And uh, everybody is working remotely as well. So the coaches are are at home working remotely, whether that be recruiting or film study, et cetera. Uh, our staff are working remotely. Uh, our fundraising staff are trying to reach out to our supporters, et cetera. Um, and we're just we're working through a number of issues related to the behind the scenes activity, both in the current fiscal year and then preparing for next uh, academic and fiscal year as well. Yeah, and obviously with so much uncertainty still, it makes that job pretty, pretty darn difficult right now. Yeah, there's there's a lot of uncertainty, but we try to keep it in perspective, right? Like there's more important things going on yeah. in the world right now than, uh, you know, when we're going to be able to have workouts and when we're going to be able to have practice. And uh, so we are working away at trying to make sure that the organization's in good, in good shape. Uh, at the same time, we're trying to maintain the right sense of perspective about, you know, what's really important these days in a, in a much more significant situation than, than sports. Sure, absolutely. And of course, you, you have the, the Evo program. You've done so much for, for student athletes and building their total experience. In this time when it's so difficult with so many things shut down, there are student athletes who are still around Davis, as you mentioned, throughout the state. How do you keep in contact with them and how do you keep some of those services still available for them? Yeah, so all of our services have shifted remote. Uh, there's Our advisors are doing remote appointments with the student athletes, which is great. We're still doing Evo activities remotely. We've had a couple uh, alumni guest speakers come in and address uh, groups of students and our, uh, our American Studies course about career development that many student athletes take. Uh, they, they, that has continued, and so we're, we're pleased about that, but Everything's obviously modified, and we're going to continue to adjust as, as we need to uh, going forward in the spring quarter. Sure, and absolutely. Spring quarter, all the athletics were, were uh, canceled, as you mentioned. And obviously, for a lot of the fall sports, including basketball, they didn't get a chance to finish their season. I know being with men's basketball, they were literally down in Anaheim getting ready to play in the first round of the Big West tournament before being called back to, to UC Davis. So obviously, a lot of those students still you know, dealing with that frustration of what they were unable to accomplish. Yeah, it's unfortunate, right? Like, it's a really difficult situation for careers and seasons to end uh, really instantly. Um, 
and we hope to be able to honor the seniors and and make sure that we're recognizing everybody as as you know the year concludes um you know perhaps when we're able to gather in person we'll be able to do yeah. that appropriately that might even be in the fall uh, but yeah that's the, those end of the season you hate to see that that's that's yeah. tough for, the, for student athletes and and those especially that didn't play that much of their season uh this year yeah now i know there's been a lot of talk in fact the nc2a the nc2a has come out and said that they are going to give seniors an extra year of eligibility for those who are unable to participate in this spring quarter how does that affect uc davis and have you guys been able to develop a game plan for that yeah we're working through the specifics of it but we do um uh the, the NCAA has permitted every spring sports student athlete, in fact, to have that year of eligibility back. So whether they're a senior or a freshman, they'll they'll essentially have an additional year added on to their um, their clock uh, going forward. So we're working through what that means for the organization and whether seniors will elect to come back and continue their education in some way. Which you know, obviously, they have to have a appropriate path of study. We're not people aren't just going to be you know, on pause and taking the minimum number of units and just kind of hanging out. We're trying to make sure that people have the appropriate path, an appropriate path of study to continue. Um, and we'll see how that works its way uh, through uh, our processes in the next few weeks as people make decisions about next year. Sure. And Kevin, obviously for football, it, it kind of was a blessing for them because most schools do spring training they did their winter quarter spring uh, training, you know, and so they were able to get all their practices in before this whole thing came out. So Coach Hawkins moving things up worked out well for football this year. Yeah, the, the primary reason, as you know, Scott, as to why Hawk moves the spring practice to the winter quarter is so that the spring quarter is completely free for the players to go study abroad or do internships and focus on really non-football things, which I think is great and really aligned with the spirit of what we're trying to accomplish at UC Davis. One of the side effects of that this year, of course, was that the spring practice period for UC Davis was finished and we were able to get a lot of um, a lot of things accomplished. And uh, that, you know, that might not have been the case for other people, but we're, you know, it's it's still a challenging situation for all of us. And we're going to continue to move forward here as best we can. Uh, everybody's remote. Everyone's doing voluntary workouts and um you know, we'll see how football continues to develop as the summer and the fall come. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously football has been in the news, especially with the NFL. Donald Trump met with all the uh, commissioners from the various professional leagues. And he, he came out and said that uh, football should start on time in the fall. Of course, here in California, Gavin Newsom said over the weekend he, he didn't see how football could be played in California in the fall with large crowds. Obviously, that affects what could potentially happen at UC Davis, too. Have you been able to kind of think through that and make contingencies. I know it's very early in the game, but obviously people are thinking about buying season tickets, all the marketing, everything else that goes behind that. So where would you say things are at that point in terms of trying to figure things out for the fall with football and other sports? Yeah, we're thinking through various scenarios and modeling various scenarios. Um, you know, I'm not an epidemiologist, obviously, and we're going to just listen to what the science uh, folks say about uh, and the public health folks say about what's safe and what's not. And I'm sure the NCAA and the big sky and other folks that are involved in setting the regulations for when we come back and how we come back, will will also pay attention to uh, the science on the matter. But we are considering various permutations for how football may proceed this fall and still too early to know anything for sure. But there is a, re a reasonable likelihood that football season will be affected in some way and uh, we are trying our best to be proactive and prepared for all those different scenarios. Yeah, so what do you tell somebody who is thinking about buying season tickets or trying to be involved? What, what's the message at this point to them? Yeah, well, in fact, our season ticket holders are, have been great and continue to renew their season tickets, and we're, we're hopeful that um, the season will proceed as, as scheduled, and we would encourage people to you know, continue to act act as if it will uh, proceed as scheduled. And if that ends up being the case, obviously we'll make some adjustments. Uh, excuse me, if that ends up not being the case, we'll, we'll make some adjustments. But, you know, we, we're, um, our message is like the Aggies are gonna be here. We're, we're eager to, uh, to get back on the field and provide some, some fun and some inspiration and some, uh, hopefully some positive energy once this is all over with. And uh, we'd love everyone to be part of that when that happens later on uh, in 2020. 
Well, I'm certainly being optimistic. My, my background profile picture is obviously Aggie Stadium full on a gorgeous fall afternoon. So I'm, I'm hoping for the best and I know everybody else is as well. Kevin, obviously this is a very trying time. Is there some, as you mentioned, silver linings personally for you? You have a chance to be at home, spend some time with the newborn, with your young children, with your wife, all together. People are healthy. That's fantastic. Are there some other blessings or some other other opportunities that this has created in terms of what you've been able to look at from the athletic department side? I think that it, well, as you mentioned, the, from a personal standpoint, like I'm, I'm trying to lead our organization from my daughter's bedroom where I'm where we're currently talking. So that's been interesting and, and fun. But the, um, I think that people, when something's taken away from you, have it's a good reminder how much you miss it and how important it is to you. And I think that certainly our student athletes and, and everybody else involved in the program, when the sports stop, people realize again, hey, this is really important to me and I really, really miss this and I can't wait for it to come back. So I think that's good. And I think that actually in, in, in higher education, there might be some short-term uh, challenges in, you know, broadly in higher ed because of some, we'll see how enrollment is affected in the short term from, from the current circumstances, but certainly the remote models of instruction will, will be, I think, a net positive for higher ed in general. And, and as far as athletics, I'm hopeful that some of our administrative work and, and our operational work that we're still able to do remotely opens yeah. up some more efficiencies for us when it comes to how we do meetings and how much travel we really need to do for conference meetings, et cetera. So, you know, there's, there's, there's a few things that hopefully will be, will be positive from this, but in general, like we're really more concerned about the overall public health situation, which is obviously very far from positive. We are very proud and uh, really a, a lot of admiration for our partners at UC Davis health in how, UCDH is leading the charge when it comes to the treatment and mitigation efforts related to COVID-19. There are a lot of research activities going on there and a lot of, um, a lot of really innovative and, and important medical work. And that's, that's, gonna, that's a positive thing for our institution as well. So that's, that's, uh, that's something we're paying attention to. Yeah, no question. UC Davis has been in the forefront in terms of helping fight this, this horrible virus. Kevin, I know you're an avid reader. Uh, I've taken advantage of the, the library that you have within the department uh, there uh, by your office. Do you have any good reads or any suggestions for people that they might, as they're trying to catch up and find things to do, that you might suggest to put on their reading list? Well, I, uh, the, the, the book that comes to mind the most given the current circumstances is a book called the is a book called black swan uh by nasim talib who who writes a lot of this he writes a lot about a number of things but this book is about unpredictable dramatic events and uh the far-reaching impacts that they have and and i think that the current covid 19 situation is very much a black swan event that's really having an impact on society and athletics and higher ed and in ways that were previously unimaginable. Uh, and I, I've been reading a lot of analyst reports, um, trying to understand or, and learn more about the financial markets and how, they, and how the economy might respond. And obviously nobody is able to predict the future, but I've, I've, I've been trying to get as educated as, on, on that as I can so I can help guide our organization through the next uh, year, which we know will be impacted by the circumstances that we're currently working through now. Yeah, no question. It's a very challenging times. So I'm going to write down that book. That'll be something I can use to, to pass the time a little bit. Kevin, I certainly appreciate the time. And I know I speak for everybody uh, with UC Davis. Very proud to have you at the leadership during these difficult times. I know that you will lead the ship in the right direction. And uh, certainly we wish you the very best. And we wish everybody the very best involved with UC Davis Athletics. And I hope I'm able to see you in the near future. And I certainly hope I'm able to see you at UC Davis Health Stadium in the fall. Yep, same. And thanks to everybody out there for, for your all support. And we, uh, we look forward to being there for you uh, to generate a little positive energy when, uh, when sports can return. So thank you for your support. And everybody uh, out there, we, we wish you the best and be safe. All right, Kevin, thank you for your time. Again, this has been the Aggie Overtime Zoomcast.
presented by your local Geico office. Today's edition brought to you by Woodstock's Pizza, located in downtown Davis. Reminder, they're open for curbside pickup and contactless delivery from lunch to late night. Woodstock's offers your favorite beer, wine, hard cider, and hard seltzer to go. Try even their draft leaders to go or bring your grower and they will try to fit you with your happy hour pricing all day, every day. Order online at woodstocks.com. And Kevin, it's important to note, please support all your UCMS athletic partners during these times too. They need your support right now. Yeah, absolutely. I'd encourage everybody out there, as Scott mentions, to uh, to support Woodstocks and our, a number of our other restaurant partners. Um, there are there are delivery options, there are pickup options, and the the partners who are great to the university and our athletic program uh, do need the support right now. So we'd encourage that. Yep. All right, Kevin. Thank you again very much. Stay safe, and we'll talk soon. All right. Thank you. All right, look uh, for more Aggie Overtime Zoomcasts coming your way in the future weeks. We're going to have a lot of great content on UC Davis Athletics, other guests, other coaches, other UC Davis personnel. We look forward to bringing you this and in hopes of keeping in contact with you and at least bringing you some information during these trying times. Thanks for watching today's first edition of Aggie uh, Overtime. Hey.